Their early efforts can be seen clearly in this 4D scan. Mother eats is transferred through the placenta into the fetus's bloodstream and then out into the amniotic fluid. The fetuses sample it as their taste buds develop. With their senses developing quickly, our fetuses are about to start using them. Twins and other multiples are known for a particular characteristic in utero. Scientists have even witnessed them playing games together. Twenty weeks into gestation, the fetuses are about seven and a half inches long, small enough to cradle in the palm of their mother's hand. They can't open their eyes yet, but the main structure of the eyeball is complete. The iris, which controls the amount of light that enters the eye, is forming but the pupil doesn't appear until closer to birth. The fifth month is an important time for the nervous system. The number of nerve cells increase rapidly. 2.5 million neurons per minute. 100 billion by birth. Their biggest task now is to grow. But this will also become their biggest problem. Up until now, each has developed at approximately the same pace as singletons. But this is about to change. Eventually, the womb won't have enough room for two full-size babies, endangering each of them. Gradually, their rate of growth begins to slow to ensure that they continue to grow at an equal pace. Taller women have longer abdomens, which allows them to carry a greater weight. Twenty-four weeks into development, the lung Because higher multiples are almost always born prematurely, doctors give the mother a steroid to help surfactant form. The babies are now too large to be captured collectively in the field of a 4D scan. We'll see them interacting. As each baby appears individually, it's often possible to see the limb of one of the others. These 4D scans show one twin pushing against the other. Even fraternal twins, in their own chorions, feel their neighbor impinging on their space. Though space is becoming cramped, the twins and other multiples are about to start engaging in one of the most fascinating of all prenatal developmental activities, game playing.
In one case, fraternal twins were regularly seen in scans cheek to cheek on each side of the dividing chorions. At about one year of age, these twins' favorite game was to stand on either side of a curtain and laugh as they touched each other through the fabric. Scientists think their prenatal behavior carried over into early childhood. Beyond play, twins who behave aggressively in utero may carry it forward into childhood. Another case involved a twin pair at about four months gestation. One twin was dominant and aggressive, the other quieter and more submissive. Often the first twin would push or hit the other. Whereas the quieter twin would withdraw and place his head on the placenta as if for comfort or protection. After birth and as the twins grew up, they showed the same relationship pattern. At four years old, whenever a fight broke out, the quieter twin would retreat to his bedroom and put his head on the pillow. But these movements probably aren't as aggressive as they seem. It could just be a consequence of their relative positions. The twin on the left is probably kicking to exercise his leg. However, the twin on the right is learning a valuable early life lesson. He uses his hand to protect his face. Twins are a reproductive accident. At 26 weeks into gestation, suddenly the eyes open and the eyelids separate for the first time. Some scientists believe the babies can see now, at least enough to make out the shapes of their siblings in the darkness. For singletons, the view is limited, but for twins, there's much to take in when light occasionally penetrates the womb. The inner and middle ear, which have been growing since week four, are now fully formed and functional. They can also hear muffled sounds from the outside world, including music and voices. Twins are now one quarter of their birth weight, while triplets and quads are a third. Their brains are still developing extremely fast. 100 trillion synapses. Each twin is very similar and yet also very different. And the differences will affect both looks and personality. It's difficult to tell how or where these similarities and differences originate. It shouldn't be a surprise then that as identicals grow up, they tend to share views about subjects as diverse 
as modern art and the death penalty. Make the long journey through gestation in close proximity. Most identical twins share a single chorion, therefore sharing a single food and oxygen source. But as we've seen, 30% of identicals split early enough after conception to acquire their own chorion, and with it, their own placenta. Studies show that the IQs of twins with separate placentas are more likely to vary than the IQs of twins who share one. The minor differences in the quality and degree of food and oxygen they've received has subtly modified their brains and thus their mental abilities. Sharing a placenta can also lead to complications if one twin restricts the blood flow to the other. Thanks to advances in fetal surgery, doctors can now treat this condition using laser technology in the womb. We're now 28 weeks into development, into the umbilical cord. This masterpiece of natural design is thick and resilient. It contains two arteries and a vein, but for twins sharing an amniotic sac, this life-giving supply line also presents a unique danger. Identicals can get entangled in each other's cords, cutting off the flow of food and oxygen either to themselves or to their twin. Identicals who share a single amniotic sac are often delivered by cesarean to reduce the risk of entanglement when the babies are born. In the last weeks before birth, the babies are putting on as much weight as they can. At seven months, Julie's quads now weigh between one and two pounds close to their predicted birth weight. Identicals, like Julie's, are like trees growing from the same roots. They all harmlessly exchange blood across their shared placenta. Our triplets are most of the way through gestation. And after seven long months in the womb, they are about to glimpse their first view of the outside world. The fetus's bodies can also regulate and control their development. At least if one twin isn't receiving enough blood in the womb, his body will take steps to preserve the all-important brain. He's actually able to regulate the volume that different parts of his body receive. And more is directed to his brain. It's a miracle of fetal biology. As fingertips develop, they receive blood from the veins. This makes them swell, forming distinctive patterns known as whorls, which are most obvious on the right index finger. 
The fingers on our left hand share the same blood supply as our legs. If blood is directed away from our legs and other extremities during development, we have fewer whorls on the left index finger. These patterns can help indicate how healthy our heart will be later in life. At 30 weeks, the fetuses now have everything in place. Intricate details, like their eyelashes, have formed. For single babies, this final 10-week period is about one thing, growing. But for multiples, it's not so easy. There's no more space in the womb. The babies push and shove as they compete for room. The eyeballs can move in their sockets and react to light. It's been observed that when a strong light is shined on the abdomen, the baby will react to it. Thirty-two weeks. Single babies are still about eight weeks from birth. But for the triplets, the big moment is much closer. All multiples present a delicate balance between leaving them inside long enough to be sufficiently large at birth. Thirty-four weeks in the womb is ideal for triplets. Because of the dangers of natural labor, doctors will recommend a cesarean. For the past eight months, Jennifer's triplets have had no one but each other for companionship. <laughs> 